Hey, Shalom, brothers and sisters, and Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Today's lesson is going to be about how the elect will take the kingdom. I wrote up a nice dissertation, and hopefully this is very will be very edifying for the body. And um, I already prayed over it and everything, but this will be unto the glorification and honor of Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach Bahashem, Rakh HaKodesh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now let's get into it, man. The elect shall take the kingdom. Now we're going to start at Joel chapter 3, verses 6 through 8. Okay? We are, we are going to enslave the oppressor. It don't matter how you feel about it. It don't matter what your opinions are. For the word cannot lie. For in the beginning was the word. And the word and the word is Yahweh. So whatever is written shall surely come to pass. So sure that it has already come to pass. You understand? It's just awaiting its manifestation in this realm. That's the secrets of time. For it isn't linear, you know. Let's continue. Job chapter three, verse six to eight. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. The Grecians are the Edomites. The original inhabitants of the Grecians were uh, Japhetic, but uh, Esau came out the uh, Caucasus Mountains and began to conquer around the time of Alexandria, uh, excuse me, Alexander the Greek. Alexander the Great, so they call him. Around that time is when they pushed out you know, the Japhetic races, you know. But um, in the scripture, uh, Job chapter 3, verse 6, it's prophesied that we will be sold to the Grecians, the Edomites. Okay, that's one of the tabernacles of Edom. Now I'm going to continue. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. Your Edomites are going into slavery, man. <laughs> you know, it, it just is what it is. And this is a part of the doctrine that not a lot of people want to speak on because it's offensive. Uh, and I already spoke on it before, but a lot, of, even a lot of these uh, daughters of Zion, man, they're very empathetic for their oppressor. When clearly the scripture tells you that they're your enemy, man. And they've pro they have proven to be our enemy. It ain't no forgive and forget. We had to uh, pay for the sins of our forefathers, which is why we are a scattered people. You know, we don't have our sovereignty. We don't have our land. But in these last days, approaching the 400th year of our North American captivity here in Babylon, we are coming into remembrance of ourselves. Okay? And that's one of the first things that was proph prophesied to, to begin to happen in the latter times, you know, and the coming to re remembrance of ourselves, we'll begin to understand the prophecies, okay? And one of the prophecies is that we are going to enslave our oppressor, man. You know, it don't really matter how you feel about it, you know. These uh, foreign heathen women are going to be uh, concubines, you know, um, and the people who rule over us, man, they're going to be uh, handmaids and and uh, and servants because that's how Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai created it to be from the foundations of the of the earth. You know, we're coming to the end of our uh, oppression, okay? And we're seeing the crazy things that's happening upon the world. The Lord is visiting the world, okay? Now let's go to Psalms 83, verse 1 through 7, and it's going to explain how. Uh, we were sold into the Grecians and, that we, and how we were removed far from our borders. Okay? Keep keep not thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O Yahweh. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. And they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And they said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Yasharala may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites of Moab, 
and the Hagarines, Gable and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines and the inhabitants of Tyre. You know, all these nations came against us, man. You know, all these nations came against the nation of Israel. And it was prophesied because we went off. You know, if you read the scriptures, you know that our forefathers were sacrificing the Baal and Molech and following the ways of the nations. Therefore, we were enslaved, you know. So this is nothing but a, a screenplay, per se, that's, that's, written out, that's written out from the foundation of the earth. You know, we still take responsibility for our iniquities. And Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai will always be a righteous judge. But he is, always have been, and is to come. So he's all-knowing as well. So he spoke to his prophets, speaking the things that were to come. And they came to pass, you know. And the times were coming in, being that we have been scattered to the four corners of the earth. And that uh, King David in the book of Psalms, chapter 83, explained how all the nations will form a tumult against the uh, indigenous Israelites across the world. And this definitely happened. I can make a long video about that. Even to this day, when you go in these predominantly uh, so-called Negro um, areas, you know, it's opened up shop for all the heathens. You know, you have your Arabs, your Chinese, you know, your Moabites and your Japanese, your uh, Ammonites, you know. You have Edom, Esau, you know, all they, all these people own the businesses, you know, Jacob is, is has been a consumer. Jacob has been, a, been made a servant, but Yahweh Shah Mashiach shall gather us from the four corners of the earth and gather his elect. And, uh, he's going to rise us up, man. And I'm a, this is what this is about. You know, we're going to take the kingdom. This kingdom is going to be destroyed and a new king or well, a new world shall be made. And we're going to rule that new world. Now let's go into Genesis chapter 15, verse 12 through 14. And this is talking about Abraham, how uh, Abraham fell into a, a, a vision in the night. And he saw what was to become of his progeny, of his, of his children, of his seed, you know. And I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. He said unto Abraham, Yahweh, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Okay, key word. You know, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is what? He's going to judge because we're coming out of that four hundred years. Okay? So we're coming into the season of what? Judgment. And afterwards, we're going to come out with great substance. Okay? Now let's correlate that with Zechariah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. That's, that's nuclear warfare. And I know y'all remember the videos I, I made uh, concerning, you know, all in the spirit, the uh, 12 portions of tribulation and the 10 judgments upon the nations. You know, the, t the 10 plagues for the nations. And fire is one of those plagues of tribulation, man. The falling of fire, which will be from nuclear warfare. You understand? So after that happens, now I'm going to continue. This is Zechariah chapter 14, verse 13 through 14. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. And they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor. And his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. So when these nukes go off and a uh, mass populace dies off, you know, and his dead bodies, corpses burnt up in the street. And, you know, when he's millions of people are just put to death at an instant the remaining the remaining bunch of people are going to lose their minds the lord is going to put a strange spirit in the land and it's going to cause people to basically lose their top and it's not hard to envision this especially in babylon because as i have spoke earlier in my other video these people here are are gone man they're gone man majority of the people in babylon and the land of the north man they are turned all the way out you know, with uh, transhumanism, you know, the transsexual agenda, 
you know, just this land is just defiled in every way. Uh, most people are just have so many demons on them. So they're taking all these psychotropic medications. And you got to understand when these nukes fall, everything immediately will be destroyed, man. There ain't going to be no CVS to get your medications. It ain't going to be no Mickey D's to get you a burger, man. It's going to be straight up all hell breaking loose. And everybody's going to begin to rise up against each other. You understand? For survival purposes. So it will be to no avail because as it's written in Second Ezra, he who escapes the famine, the sword shall, shall destroy. So even if you, you know, you kick a door down, you know, two third or a heathen, kick a door down and, you know, kill off your neighbor. And now you got all their rice and beans and, you know, whatever they stored up. Guess what? In a matter of time, somebody's going to run up in, in there and get you. You know, it's really going to be crazy like that, man. And I got some clips for another video that I'm going to do that's going to kind of show how these neighbors are going to rise up against each other, man. It's going to be a bloodbath, man. How many guns are out here? See, I live in Virginia, you know, and uh, there's not really any gun laws out here. You know what I'm saying? And pretty much everybody out here owns a firearm. So you, so people are just going to lose their mind, man. They're going to go to their swords and rise up against each other for survival purposes, though it will be to no avail. Now I'm going to go to uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 14, okay? So first, th so verse 12 was the nukes, okay? The eyes shall consume away in their holes, tongues consume away in their mouth. That's the plague for all the people that has came up against Yasharala, okay? Against Jerusalem, which is the people before a place. You want to stay here, we're scattered, okay? In verse 13, was about how after these nukes hit, people are gonna rise up against each other, the remnant. It's gonna be like the book of uh, the book of Eli, man. All these uh, post-apocalyptic movies, man. That's what it's gonna be like. And uh, now, for, now verse fourteen, it says, "And Judah shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel, in great abundance." So when this goes down, essentially. Essentially, Yahweh is destabilizing the infrastructure of Babylon, bringing it down. And, when, and this is him rising up to the prey, impartiality, you know. And that's going to allow Jacob to go ahead and stand up. We're not going to be under the authority of Esau no more. We're not going to have to worry about jail. We're not going to have to worry about the court system, you know, the criminal justice system. You know, we're not going to have to worry about police. Because it's going to be all hell breaking loose. And Yahweh Yahweh Shah is going to put the spirit on his men, on Jacob, to rise up against this uh, Edomite supremacy. We're going to rise up, man. It's just it's written. So I'm going to continue. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. I don't know how you perceive this, but when you take something, you're not asking you're not saying please. You're physically making it happen. You're physically with force taking what you want. Okay? We're taking this kingdom. But before we take it, we got to wait for Yahweh Shaha Mashiach to rise up to the prey and to bring this kingdom to his knees. Okay? And not only that, but to also endow, endow us with uh, power from on high. Because it's not just going to be a physical battle for the demons and the. Uh, and uh, specters and, you know, these unclean spirits and even the, even the uh, left hand angels are going to be released in these last days. Very soon, you're going to be looking out your window and see these demons, man. They're going to be uh, torturing people. They're going to be raping women in the street. Demons, dog, for real. I'm not making this up. You know, it sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's, it's coming to pass. Because that's, uh, that's one of the judgments that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah has for these nations. And I went through that in the 12, uh, portions of tribulation video that I did. Attacks from the Shadims and the Spectres, which are ghosts and demons. Okay. They're going to be released, you know, from the abyss. And they're going to be here tormenting people, man. Strange apparitions, all of that. This is going to be a hell of a throwdown. Yahweh's going to bring this place down on a spiritual level. And on the physical level. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verses 21 through 22. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. 
until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. You understand? Remember what I said about Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who is the Ancient of Days, uh, and doing us with the power, and dowing us with the power? We got to wait on him to rise to the prey, man. And what he's doing right now is he's, he's rubbing his hands together. He's just getting started. You know? Who knows how long this is going to be because destruction surely shall come suddenly. You know? So any day now. We, we are in the 400th year, man. You know? Uh, sunset March 20th is going to bring in the bib which is the Hebrew New Year. So things are going to get crazy. This is going to be a highly prophetic year. You know, the brothers at uh, GMS, they uh, classified it as the year Karagma, and that seems to really be the deal because you see these people taking this RFID chip around the world, you know. But I also see it, me personally speaking as a man, I see it, it, it as being uh, the year of judgment, the year of destruction, man, because we're, cause it's prophecy. We coming into that time, and it's going to take that destruction to bring in the mass implementation of the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. So, you know, we're definitely coming into them times. This year is going to be a crazy year, and we're gonna we're gonna laugh, and we're gonna be afraid, but we're gonna laugh, man. We're gonna laugh at the destruction of the heathens, man. We're gonna laugh at the destruction of the of the uh, of the wicked kingdom, and you should you should be happy to see it. The problem is, is that uh, most most of our people, unfortunately, most of the so-called Negroes, the House of Judah, and even really all of Israel, man, they, they have Stockholm Syndrome very bad. They don't want to see this system fall. They want to see, it was up to our some of our people, you know, the two-third coons and the bedwinches and, the, you know, a lot of these women, you know, Esau was staying in power forever, you know. But Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah is not having that. The kingdom will be trans, uh, transferred to Jake and we got next man and we're going to take the kingdom you understand so when these nukes go off when this war starts man it's, all these cities are cast down with no stones laying on top of another you know it's going to be about that time look it's going to be time to look up because the redemption shall draw nigh you know but let me continue let's go to Jer uh, excuse me, Daniel chapter 7 verse 27 and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. The saints of the Most High is the 144,000 elect. You know, it's going to be 144,000. That's going to be the ruling class in the kingdom. And then, you know, all Yasharal is going to come back and be saved. But it's going to be a hierarchy. It's like it's a hierarchy in Esau's dominion. You have the pawns and the workers, you know, a lot of us out here working, punching the clock. But then you have the people who call the shots and the people who lay out the ordinances to be followed. And in the next kingdom is going to be the 144,000 elect under King David, under the authority of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who will have the entire power and authority of Yahweh. Kohala. So let's continue. Jeremiah 16. Verse 16, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith Yahusha, and they shall fish, Salaki, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them for every, from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Okay, all these underground bunkers that these elite and this top 3%. You know, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, Building Birds, all of them, man. The Royals, the, uh, the Royal uh, Elites, Prince Harry, Queen Elizabeth, all of them. We're going to snatch all of them up, and they're going to be the first fruits of captivity in the kingdom. Okay? That's what's going to go on. And you, and you can correlate that with, uh, I think it's in the book of Amos, chapter 9, I believe. Though they hide them, themselves in Carmel, which is the mountains. You know, these people are going to be hiding themselves, you know, and though they hide themselves under the seas. You know, Yahweh Shah will, will uh, command Leviathan, the serpent, to bite them. You know, these people are going to be hiding, but Yahweh Shah is going to rise us up to go and get them. And right now, we're coming to the end of the fishing season where um, Yahweh Shah has set up these prophets, 
these end time prophets, which many of them are uh, re regenerated, reincarnated from the days of old. If you go to the last verse in uh, Daniel chapter 12, it taught the, the uh, Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach told Daniel that he would stand to his lot in the later days. You know, um, if you go to Ezra, Ezra said, woe is me, what shall I do in those days? Because Ezra saw himself in the visions that he saw. He knew and understood that he was going to be here when the, when the end comes. You know, when Yahweh Shah was, um, when the, when, in Revelation, when it talks about when Yahweh Shah Hamashiach returns, that every eye shall see him, even them that pierced him. So a lot of these people are back, man, the prophets and the wicked alike. But, you know, that's aside from the point. Just, you know, wanted to touch on that. But uh, these wicked, man, the people, these preppers, they know what's coming, man. They know what the deal is. You know, they're going to be hiding, man. And Jehovah Shah Mashiach going to rise up his elect. And we're going to go hunt them, man. But right now, we're in the season of fishing, you know, spreading this word, trying to help seal the fellow elect and uh, help edify the body that we may raise up more prophets, you know. Hopefully, I pray that, you know, we're not just listeners, but also doers, man. Because we, we, we pass the spirit on to each other like blood flows to a body. You know what I'm saying? We are the body of Yahweh Shahamashiach. Spiritually, you know what I'm saying? So when one brother brings that fire, make a fire video, it might entice you to make a fire video or put some scriptures on your heart. But this is the work that we must do until we are raised up as hunters. Now let me go to Luke chapter 24, verse 29. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So as we watch all these calamities happen, all these things begin to fall apart. We're going to keep praising Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Keep, keep praying, you know, for the destruction of America, also known as Babylon the whore, also known as the, uh, Egypt, also known as uh, the revised Roman Empire, uh, Rome 2.0. You know, all these code words, you know. We got to pray against this place, man, and wait and do what we got to do day to day and wait to be endued with power. We got to wait to get sealed. Well, well, the sealing is already here, but we got to wait to receive the reward of our seal, having that spiritual power, having them laws put inside of us. Because what? The seal, the 144,000 is what? The first fruits to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So being the first fruits of Yahweh, we are the first fruits to receive the covenant. And what is the covenant that Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, has with the house of Jacob? That covenant is that his laws and statutes and commandments will be put inside of us. Okay, that we will sin no more. So being the first fruits of that, when that happens, you're going to have immortality. You're going to come back how man was originally created. You know, right now we, we, we have death all on us. You know, the blood of Yahweh Shah Mashiach has redeemed us from the grave. You know, but at the end of the day, the glory of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah, shall be seen upon the elect. And that's in uh, Isaiah chapter 60, I believe. Arise. It says something along the lines of Arise, the glory has uh, shone upon you. The land is in darkness, in great darkness. I'm going to get it right quick. You know what? I don't got it out. But it's in Isaiah chapter uh, chapter 60. Arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord has shone upon you. Yeah, that's going to happen. That's talking about the ceiling of the elect. Now let's go to the second address, chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. You understand? We're coming to the end of Esau's dominion. Okay? The time of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. And we see it because look what's going on around the world. Look what's happening in Venezuela. Look what's happening with Russia and China and America. The Lord is causing a tumult against these nations to turn on each other. And really, although they're going to turn on each other, they, they're all going to turn on, on Babylon. They're all going to turn on America and burn America with fire. Because that is the will of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's the spirit that he's putting on these nations, you know, to burn this, to burn this thing up, man. But that's what we need to happen. Why? So it can be the end of Esau's rule. And Jacob can be the beginning of that which followeth. And our turn is going to be forever, everlasting. Okay? It's never, ever going to end. We're never, ever going into captivity again. Call hello. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. 
Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge the angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? In the elect, we keep, we, we pray and we try every day to keep sound judgment. And you know when you're on the right path because it's so against what the, uh, what the social standard is. When you come into this truth, you realize that everything is upside down here. Everything is backwards. Everything is anti Hamashiach here. You understand? But, these same these same people, the fellow elect, who are cut from this cloth, man, from the foundation of the of the earth. We shall judge the angels, man. We shall judge the world. We're gonna have this kingdom. We, uh, over us is gonna be King David, and over and over King David is gonna be Yahweh Shah Mashiach. We're gonna have all dominion, power, and rulership forever and ever. Amen. Now let's go to Matthew chapter nineteen, verse twenty eight. <laughs> And Yahweh shall have said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have, which have followed me in the regeneration, yeah, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You understand? So not only are we going to judge the angels, not only are we going to judge the world, we're going to judge these two-third Israelites who are going to come back, Okay. The elect is going to rule. We, we are a ruling class. We are a priesthood. Set aside for Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Okay? Now let's uh, go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captive, whom captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. That's coming, man. That's that, that's what we're coming into. We're going to rule over our oppressors, man. We're going to be the new world power. The Lord is going to switch it around. But what he's going to have to do is lay it all even here. And these Gentiles, they're going to rebuild. They're going to rebuild the the, the uh, kingdom. They're going to rebuild the cities. And we and, and uh, everything's going to be righteous, man. We're going to rule in righteousness. And, and they're going to love it. They're going to love it, man. Because it's going to be, everything's going to be righteous. When the wicked rule, the people mourn it. Look at Venezuela right now, man. Them people down there mourning, man. Why? Because Esau's in power. It's a power struggle, man. You know? And they're playing these war games, trying to cripple that country, man. To get some type of leverage to get uh, uh, that puppet politician Guido in office. Okay? But yeah, now, you know, we're going to rule over our oppressors, man. Point blank period. It's a clean cut, man. These, 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 uh, Gentiles are going into captivity, man. We're going to take the kingdom. It is what it is. There's no room for emotions. There's no room for, uh, you know, your, your, uh, foolish compassion. It don't matter. Cause we're going to take the kingdom and the captives we were, we're going to rule over them. We're going to rule over our oppressors, man. And their women are going to be handmaids, and their men are going to be servants. And there will be polygamy, okay? There will be concubines. What are you going to do with a handmaid? Play patty cake? No, man. No, man. That's going off. And anybody who's in this truth and, is, and speaks against polygamy, man, you're going off. Whether you are polygamous or not. You know, Paul told us it's best not even to touch a woman. But to say... That it's wrong, you know, when, of course, there's a righteous order to it, and it's going to be practiced in righteousness. But to say that it's wrong is completely going against scripture, and you're completely going off. You know what I mean? Granted, King Solomon went off, but he went off because he was building altars for his wives to serve their foreign gods, to serve essentially their devils, you know. He allowed uh, pagan worship in his presence, and that separated him from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. His own, his woman, his wives. But it wasn't a sin that he had these many wives. King David had over eight. Jacob had over four. The nation of Israel came out of four women. The problem is, is a lot of you women don't understand your purpose and your role in this, man. When Yahweh Shimi Yahweh Shah is going to clean the filth out of our woman, 
He's going to purge these women. So they're going to be in their right mind very soon. But let's continue, man. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience in the face of the saints. Okay? Who 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 led our people into captivity, man? Of course, you had the, the northern ten tribes who were already here in the land of the north in the Central America. Who came over here and enslaved them, man, and tortured them? Esau from the house of the Spaniards. Yeah, they bought the Catholicism, you know, and they bought rape, murder, and slaughter, and merciless killing, and pestilence. Okay? Esau's blessing was the sword, man. Now, who got us here in North America, the land in the north? The, the three southern tribes between North America and the Caribbeans and the Isles. The English and the British. Okay? And the French. Yeah. So all of them got to go in captivity, man. And you got to pay for the sins of your fathers. And one of the things that I want to say, not to go off, but one of the things we got to do when we're in prayer is, is repent for the sins of our fathers as well. We got to repent for our, for our sins of, of our lineage, man. You know, because we got to pay for the sins of our fathers. And this is something that I started doing, you know, because this generational curses, man. A lot of it comes from the iniquities of our fathers, man. You know, but we're living in a day and time in the last days when the Lord is really speaking with our hearts. And his holy rock, HaKadosh, is giving us knowledge on what to do and, and what to do and what to pray for, man. And that's one of the things that you want to keep in prayer is repentance, repentance, repentance. And not only for yourself, but also for your forefathers who have gone off. After all, that is what got us in slavery, right? That is what got us scattered to the four corners of the earth in the first place, right? Yeah. So keep that in mind. But what I'm going to actually say, getting into uh, the next verse, which is going to be Isaiah chapter 14, verse 21, is uh, that we had to pay for the sins of our fathers, and so does, so does these Edomites. So does all the Gentiles. So does all the heathens. If Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah has scattered and punished, his own children, how much more so the Gentile nations, okay? So they're going to wreak all holy hell on earth, man. No pun intended. But they're going to deal with hell down here, man. You know, before they're able to serve us in the kingdom. And they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna enjoy us ruling over them, man. Because we're not going to do it in a wicked manner. It's going to be peace in the earth. It's going to be righteousness in the earth. We're going to be the priests and the kings of the earth. You understand? There ain't going to be no more wickedness. There ain't going to be no more feminism. It ain't going to be no more chemtrails. It ain't going to be no more fluoride in, in your water and, and, and medication in your water, man. Gender bender, gender bending, uh, medications in your water to, to, to have you, to have you thinking like a homosexual, man. It ain't going to be none of that craziness going on. It ain't going to be no homosexuality. Everybody's going to learn righteousness. Okay. So there will be some Gentiles in the kingdom to come. Granted, uh, pertaining to Revelations chapter 21, uh, there's only 12 gates to the kingdom. And that's for the 12 tribes of Israel. But these Gentiles will be in servitude because we're going to rule over them. And we're going to teach them righteousness. They will observe the holy feast days. They will serve Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. They will serve the Lord. And we're going to teach them how to do it and we're going to enforce it. It will not be an option, okay? And any nation that comes against it will surely be put to death. Now I'm going to get to that. Now let's go to Isaiah 14, chapter 21. And this correlates with Revelation 13 and 10. You know, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay, Isaiah 14, 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with the cities, okay? And judgment upon these uh, heathens is gonna be at the hands of not only natural disasters, I'm not gonna call them, well, I guess we gonna call them natural, but it's really uh, the angels, you know, sending arrows and swinging swords down here that cause earthquakes and volcanoes. And, you know, it's really angels doing it in the spiritual realm, but, you know, we're gonna call them natural disasters, but not only 
is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai going to punish these heathens and even Esau primarily because Esau bears the most shame out of all the Gentiles but not only he's going to uh, put them to death through natural disasters but also from the hands of his children Israel and I'm going to get into that Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 14 through 15 therefore thus saith the Lord God Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Teman, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. So Teman and Dedan, those are tabernacles and affiliations with Esau, Edom. Okay? Now I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, save the Lord God, Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. You understand? We gonna bring the judgment on these heathens. We gonna bring it on their ass, man. It's not a game. It's not a joke. We don't got time for feelings. We don't got time for emotions. This is reality, and it shall come to pass. And the Lord is conditioning the hearts of His saints to get ready to get to get busy on, on these Gentiles, man. Especially on Esau. We're gonna get busy on Esau. You understand? And that's just me reading off Revelation 13, 10, Isaiah 14, 21, and Ezekiel 25, 14 through 15. It all points to the same direction. Now let's go to Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Yehobah, Hashem, Yehobah, Shah, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is the house of Esau. Idumia is Edom. Okay? It's Greek for Edom. Okay? Let me continue. Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So, Yahweh Yahweh has a problem with you Edomites. You know? Y'all done split the land over there in Palestine during the, Belf uh, the Belfort Agreement. And appointed that land to yourselves, but it don't belong to you or the Palestinians. Okay? It belongs to Yasharala, and y'all gonna come up off of it, and we're gonna take it back. And all those Amalekites out there are gonna be made to bow down and lick the dust from our feet, man. And they're gonna know that Yahweh has loved us. Thus saith the Bible in the book of Revelations. You understand? Everything is about to be, re is about to be revealed, man. We're coming into that time. And we're almost there in the lesson. We're almost there. Okay? But let's continue to um, Ezekiel 36. Oh, well, better before I go to uh, my next verse, I want to also add with Ezekiel 36, chapter, uh, verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. It talks about uh, what I just read. You know how our land was split, and Esau, the house of the tabernacles of uh, Adumia, which is Edom, had a uh, part of our land, removed us from it, scattered us abroad. Going hand in hand with Psalms 83 and part of our land, you know, and that can be uh, versed up uh, cross reference with Lamentations 5 and 2. Our inheritance is given to strangers, man. You know, all oh, this is a prophetic oracle, man. Now let's get into Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 12 through 14. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people, Israel, and they shall possess thee. And thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth, henceforth bereave them of men. Okay? So we're going to rule over these people, man. Over Esau, over all the nations. Okay? Thus says the Lord God, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, because they say unto you, Thou land devourest up men, and hast bereaved thy nations. Therefore, thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations anymore, save the Lord God, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. So this is to the house of Idumia, man. As I read in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5, and what Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah is saying that they're no longer going to abuse the nations, man. Esau, his gig is up. Everybody knows what he's up to. This is why they don't want no boots on the ground in Venezuela, because they know what this devil is up to. He comes as if he's uh, uh, bearing the light. He comes as if he's uh, trying to be a helper. And he's coming to destroy you, to take you out. 
okay, to take your seat in power, to use up your resources. Esau has lived by the sword since the beginning. Okay, and the nations are beginning to know this. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai knows this, and he's going to cut them off entirely, man. Thus says the book of Obadiah and the Holy Bible. You understand? They're going to be cut off. And according to what I just read in Ezekiel 36, they shall devour men no more. You're not going to be able to bomb no more countries. You're not going to bring your feminism or or your fiat uh, currency anywhere. None of the, all that's going to be cut short, man. Because it's all wicked. You know, with your interest rates, all that, man. It's all wicked, man. Your religion, your paganism is all wicked. Babylonian, man. Y'all gonna be put to death. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 19, verse 17. And the land of Judah shall be a terror upon Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. Now, when we're talking about uh, the land of Egypt in the book of Isaiah, it's not talking about the old Egypt, it's talking about now. Look at the back of your dollar bill. You understand? Look in the Grand Canyon. They found uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics in the Grand Canyon. You know, look at uh, in, the, in the book of Deuteronomy. When Yahushua, uh, when, when Yahushua, when Yahushua said he was sent into Egypt again, again, on slave ships with yokes of iron around their neck. It's talking about the current Egypt, which is the current world power, which is Babylon, the whore, which is also known as America. Okay, and it's not hard to see that these that these Americans are about to be afraid of Jake because they already are afraid of Jake. When there's no law and order, when Yahweh Shai rises up to the prey and throws down the entire infrastructure of this country, we're going to get busy on these Gentiles, man, especially Esau, and they're going to be terrified. They're going to be terrified, man. They're not going to want no type of smoke. And then the 144,000 elects are going to be risen, too. They're not going to want no type of smoke, man. They're going to be terrified. But, you know, like I said, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity, okay, and prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. So they have every right to be afraid. They should be afraid because the prophecy shall come to pass, man. Let's go to Luke chapter 19, verse 27. But those mine enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me in the kingdom to come, any nation that don't want to that don't want to uh, abide by the holy rules and the holy people are going to be put to death, man. You're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna uh, observe the holy high days, man. High holy days. You will observe it. If you don't, you how about you? How about going to plague your land? You're not going to have any water, and you, you're eventually going to be put to death, man. That's really your ultimatum. It's going to be serve the Lord or die. That's what it's going to be. You understand? Now let's continue. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 12 for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted that's what I just said that's what I just said all in the spirit you know that's what's written now let's go to Zephaniah I'm gonna close it out with Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8 and this is where we should be at in the body right now this is where we mentally and spiritually should be at okay now let's continue Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8 Therefore, wait ye upon me, save Yahweh Shahamashiach, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms that pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. You understand? So all these nations are going to be gathered and destroyed and we see the bubbling up of this now all these it's a race to the nukes inf treaties are getting uh are getting uh, scrapped so it's about to be a no host barn and all these nations are going to gather go to war and uh a lot of men are going to die you know men are about to be made very few on the earth because of war and because of famine you know and uh how is behind all this though man he's doing all this it's all in his plans from the beginning but we're about to rise up into our glory, brother, and we shall take the kingdom. And hopefully, this was an edifying uh, dissertation for the body of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. And until next time, Shalom.